Hello friends, in today's episode we will be talking about labor care guide. And now in this video we will be comparing previous partograph with the labor care guide which is the modern day partograph. So let us look into detail what are the sections of labor care guide and how to go about it. When we start talking about the WHO labor care guide, we need to know a few uh, basic points. First of all, what are the guiding principles for the WHO intrapartum care model? So this very picture summarizes the guiding principles of WHO intrapartum care model. There are questions which you get in the examination in your theory paper. There you can focus on these points. Next we come to the point when WHO labor care guide should be started. It should be started plotting when the cervical dilatation is 5 cm that is in active phase of first stage of labor. Then where to start and who should start plotting it. All level of care that is primary, secondary or tertiary level wherever normal progress of labor is taking place there WHO labor care guide has to be filled. Now why it should be filled? It is because it helps in improving every woman's experience of childbirth, health and well-being of every individual. It helps in giving a good quality and evidence-based cl uh, clinical care for women in labor. It gives a positive childbirth experience because for the first time there have been proper introduction of birth care attendant that is birthing attendant should be present with every labor woman and it expands the focus of our labor so that we can give respectful maternity care to every woman attending the labor room. So this is the labor care guide. Let us see what all are the components of the labor care guide. The labor care guide consists of seven sections. The first section is uh, consisting of identifying information. So you can find the time of admission, time of delivery, the risk factors, parity and labor onset, active labor diagnosis. These all are present in the first section. So this is the filled labor care guide. So it is shown that Mrs. X got uh, her rupture uh, membranes ruptured on 6th of July 2023 at 5 a.m. and she has history of stillbirth anemia. She is second gravida with previous spontaneous delivery and a spontaneous onset of labor. So these are the section one. Now you find here with every hourly the time 6 a.m. 7 a.m. 8 a.m. 9 a.m. So every hourly the progress is charted. This is the active first stage of labor. So active labor starts from 5 cm. So when the patient is 5 cm dilated we start plotting the labor care guide and when she goes into second stage of labor the uh, plotting is done in the right hand side. So this is section 1. Coming to section 2. The section 2 consists of supportive care. So this is the supportive care. So uh, section 2 consists of companionship whether companion is allowed with the patient or not so you plot it as yes no or companionship denied this is because birth companion or birth attendant is mandatory nowadays in the labor rooms second is the pain relief so whether any pharmacological or non-pharmacological pain relief is given yes or no oral fluids yes or no whether patient has been given oral fluids and the posture of the patient whether patient is mobile or in supine position so these are the things which come under supportive care and this is section 2 now there is a column called the alert column this alert column whatever things are plotted in the alert column is uh, what is not expected so if these things are plotted in the graph then we should be cautious that is no for companion if there is no companion allowed with the patient no pain relief is given to the patient, no oral fluid is allowed or the posture is supine position, then these are not at all expected. Now we find Mrs. X was uh, not initially allowed companionship, but then later on you find at 7 a.m., 8 a.m., the companionship was allowed. Pain relief was given at all times. Oral fluid was also given, yes. 
patient denied at uh, 9 am and 12 pm but then patient was always given oral fluids and then the posture is almost always mobile a few of the times she was supine position she was confined to the bed in the second stage when she was fully dilated then we start plotting over here now this is section 2 section 3 is care of the baby now this section consists of all the baby details so you find baseline fetal heart rate fetal heart rate decelerations whether there are early variable or late decelerations what is the color of the amniotic fluid if amniot if the membranes are intact then you plot it as i if the membranes have been ruptured then you mark the color of the amniotic fluid it can be either meconium stained or it can be blood stained or it can be clear c for clear or absent liquor if there is a fetal position the occiput is anterior posterior or transverse so accordingly you plot it as p t and a so it is expected to be at a occipital anterior if it is occipital posterior or transverse at full full dilatation then you have to be cautious caput and molding as we have already discussed molding uh, grade uh, zero is when the bones are not touching each other grade one is the bones are touching each other grade two they are overlapping but during relaxation they are coming back to their own position and grade three when the bones are overlapping at relaxation phase also caput is also graded into grade one grade two grade three based on the uh, degree of the shignon so likewise you find the baseline fetal heart rate fetal heart rate deceleration now always remember the fetal heart rate is auscultated every 30 minutes so this is important you find all the maternal parameters are taken hourly but then the fetal heart rate and fetal heart rate decelerations are marked every half hourly every 30 minutes then these are the pv findings whether amniotic fluid is there in pv finding the position of the head caput and molding so these all are charted every four hourly because pv findings are repeated every four hourly this is important next section is section four which is care of the woman so in care of the woman all the maternal parameters are there pulse systolic blood pressure diastolic blood pressure temperature and urine urine protein and acetone protein is uh, important in case of hypertensive patients and diabetes patients have will have ketone or acetone present so these are all so plotted at four hourly interval so uh, these things are also plotted now coming to the next part which is section 5 section 5 is about the labor progress which is actually a modification of the previous who partograph so contractions in 10 minutes whatever is the contraction the number of contractions and each contractions lasting for how many seconds this is what we used to uh, plot in the previous partograph using color coding whether it was dotted or lined or fully colored boxes used to be present so mild contractions are less than 20 seconds moderate are 20 to 40 seconds and severe contractions are more than 40 seconds and uh, number of contractions is also important in 10 minutes so you find that alert is a uh, line alert we put an alert if the contractions are less than 2 per 10 minute or more than 5 per 10 minutes and duration of contraction if it is less than 20 seconds then it is uh, you, that, that is mild contractions in active stage of labor is to be taken with a pinch of salt or if it is more than 60 seconds that is hyperstimulation it is ominous now the cervical uh, the head descent and the cervical dilatation we keep on plotting every four hourly so you find this is a, a change from the previous partograph that in five centimeters a woman can stay for six hours and we will not tell it is it to be prolonged labor at six centimeters woman can stay for five hours at seven centimeters for three hours at eight centimeter for two and a half hours at uh, nine centimeter for two hours so you find if you add it it comes around 16.5 hours so for uh, 16 and a half hours okay so uh, for 16 and a half hours a woman can stay in active stage of labor still we will not tell it as a prolonged labor this is the modification from previous who partograph where one centimeter per uh, hour has to be the dilatation descent of the head is also plotted 
Now you see this is very important when the patient goes into active stage of labor uh, that is when it is fully dilated then you start plotting over here. Here also you mark number of contractions in uh, 10 minutes and the duration the intensity or uh, the and the duration of each contraction so there were four contractions for 45 uh, you know uh, each lasting for 45 seconds five and five for 50 seconds and 50 seconds now here you uh, mark the contractions every 15 minutes here you mark it for 15 minutes otherwise for every 30 minutes you are marking the contractions here you mark every 15 minutes now this P is important. P is used to indicate when pushing begins. When maternal bearing down efforts start, then you plot P in the graph in the second stage. Now section 6 consists of medications. Whether any medications were given to the patient, whether any tramadol, drotinepidocin or any kind of oxytocin was added or any IV fluids were given. And the section 7 which is the last one is shared decision making. So in shared decision making you have three uh, rows. One is the assessment. So in assessment you write whether any pain relief was required by the patient, whether there is normal progress of labor or any other uh, deviation from normal which you want to enter. In the plan uh, row you have to write what whether any companionship was offered, whether pain relief was given, relaxation techniques, ambulation and uh, encouragement for uh, hydration, these all things were given or not. And lastly, you have to put your initial. So this labor care guide is a modification of the WHO partogram, which if charted helps you in proper identification of the nature and duration of labor. So there have been a few changes from the previous WHO partogram which this table summarizes in details. So this is very important in examination you are always asked when you are uh, asked about the labor care guide what is the difference from the previous WHO modified partogram. So these are the points which you should be saying. So this table summarizes the differences between the labor care guide and the previous partograph. Just check into it and you can get the, a glimpse of it. So for more information, remain updated to our channel and subscribe our channel Medimantar.